So it looks like I must have turned off my microphone on the, uh, the fourth and the fifth of fall here. Um, looks like I missed a couple. Oh yeah, I totally missed them. So I, I, I think I missed a bunch of the, uh, the star fruits that were in those kind of random patches that I filled in everywhere. So that means that, yeah, pumpkins are kind of the only option left. I missed yesterday, I think, was the last day to get in the cranberries. So now these all need to be pumpkins. Maybe I just missed that one little patch right there. Also, maybe I'm just not talking because there's nothing to say. Oh, that's right. So the other thing I'm doing is uh, El dealing with Elliot's birthday. Which is why I think I put crab pots at the beach, because uh, he only likes like duck feathers, lobsters, and pomegranates. I want to say, and maybe like lobster bisque or like you know other things related to that. So I, tr I try and catch some lobsters for Elliot, because uh, otherwise you might have to give up a pomegranate from your bat cave, and if you haven't gotten enough of the artisan goods. You might not want to give up your pomegranate, so it's not too big of a deal, in my opinion, to, <laughs> why not, to, uh, you know, go throw some crab pots on the beach in advance. Uh, the other one that's kind of challenging is that uh, if you're not friends with Elliot, you can't, like at least two hearts, you can't go into his house. And if it's raining on his birthday, he never leaves his house. So you miss his birthday if it's raining, unless you get to two hearts. Now, I'm trying to do it now, like a day before. It's obviously way too late. Uh, <laughs> it's one of those ones where, like, I, I usually, if I just get unlucky the first year, then I kind of start working Elliot's friendship the hard way, so that at least in the following year, I can get his birthday. Uh, so, you know, I, I kind of... You know, Elliot's birthday is coming up, so I'm like, okay, let's get the crab pots at the beach, let's get lobsters going. Maybe I'll get one for his birthday, or at the very least, I'll kind of get going on uh, friendship with Elliot. And the other one I really should be doing, now that I have cows, I'm getting milk, I could be making pepper poppers. But I need to become friends with uh, Shane, right? So that's one that, uh, you know, I'd definitely be working on right now um i also have all that wheat so it's pretty easy I just make a couple make a couple uh kegs right start brewing up your wheat for some beer and shane will be your best buddy ever why is gus standing outside the saloon for this little video i don't know Yeah, something definitely happened to the audio here because I was making a bunch of sarcastic comments about this little full motion video. Or what, not whatever they're called. I don't know. Heart event. Reminds me of a full motion video, but it's clearly not a full motion video. I've been talking with my bro about that a bit. Like... I don't know, there was, we've been playing a bit, a bit of retro games kind of similar to this one, and it's like the, uh, there's the old um, rendered cells, you know, rendered sprites, that was kind of like the, you know, Super Nintendo, the end of Super Nintendo, and then like some of the choicer games, and yeah, you gotta, they have to go through these events, obviously, to get bonus hearts from them, or you could just skip them if you don't care about, it's like a half a heart, maybe, uh, for... For actually going through it and being nice. You're a good person, Penny. Let's les out. 
so oh yeah so we were talking about uh you know 3d rendered cells versus there was like that beginning of uh you know early playstation uh sega saturn uh that kind of generation where uh they were just getting into 3d graphics and it was this like really awkward phase for 3d graphics where they were super boxy and not nice looking at all and uh we've just been talking about how much you know i really like there, there's some games that were done well with those kind of boxier graphics you know the panzer dragoon sagas uh crash bandicoot looked really nice uh so there's there's ways that it can be done well uh even with the very um you know sharp polygons with the very few surfaces to them but uh, just how much we like that old 3d rendered cell with a full motion video look i mean you know panzer dragoon saga it's got to be probably one of the best that those those old school full motion videos or even just the um the anime style videos were really nice like the lunars uh were great yeah i mean even games like Fi final fantasy 7 uh the the graphics are a little little harsh on the eyes to some degree uh just how boxy it is i mean maybe that's why crash bandicoot did so well as they made things naturally kind of like that in the game that was they they went with it as the style as opposed to kind of fighting it trying to do more than uh those those systems could really do there's a really cool game too that um people may or may not have heard of uh i, I'm, I like role-playing games a lot rpgs it's always been kind of where i've gravitated towards and uh this one company released a game for the Sega Genesis called Pure Solaris, which was a recently made one that's uh, more recently made for the Genesis, where they kind of some you know they figured out how to use the Genesis in ways that you know, had not really ever been figured out, and it's this pretty incredible game they they made. Uh, it's it's relatively difficult to emulate, and I think it's really hard to get your hands on an actual copy of it, but uh, can be done. Worth the effort. Yeah, another one I'm a bit, I'm kind of excited to play. Uh, I haven't really gotten into it yet. Was um, Cosmic Star Heroin was a new one they that they came out with that's got that kind of old uh, style of uh, 3D rendered cells. I don't know if they did FMVs in it. Those were like that's kind of like the the nice touches on a game, in my opinion, are those full motion videos. So, I mean, here I'm just like chopping down the woods and stuff. I mean, what do you what do you want? Nothing to talk about here. Did I even do anything today? What did I do today? I got some crab pots up. Took care of the animals. I got the rabbit in. It's kind of like, at this point in the game, you just get to kind of like lay back. To a great degree. Just kind of chill back. All your stuff's planted and watered. You have massive income that's going to start flooding in. Um... You know, a lot of the time, if you haven't done quite as well, you might be in a position where you you weren't able to get your rabbit yet, and that's not a big deal. I mean, what what'll happen is I think it's on the seventh will be the first cranberry harvest, and the money you get from that just take it just take it straight to Pierre's, sell it. You can get your coop upgrade if you needed to get that, and uh, buy your rabbit on the ninth, and then you know it might take you until later in fall to get the uh the piece of wool that you need uh to complete the animal bundle and get the greenhouse oh no the greenhouse came in a whole two weeks later it's gonna set you back breaking the game just a little bit I also have not yet played the new Xenoblade Chronicles for the Switch. That one's going to be pretty awesome, I think, too. Because the first one was was so good. Like that's that's kind of my tier list of uh, role playing games. You know, you have the uh, old Final Fantasy three slash five 
whatever you want to call that. And then, uh, you know, Chrono Trigger, just amazing. I think everyone knows that. And then uh, it's kind of like, you know, Pan's Dragoon Saga. Obviously, I already mentioned that one. And um, or, or, or kind of time, Legend of Zelda. Uh, just they did such a good job on that one. That was like for for what it was at the time. Like you almost don't realize it when it happens, but you kind of see it later. It's like, oh my god, that that game was incredible. And then, yeah, like Xenoblade Chronicles, kind of after that, has been the next kind of amazing game in that genre that they've they put together. I also did like The Last Story. That one was pretty well done, too. And of course, there's, you know, there's a lot of games that just aren't quite, like, uh, role-playing games can be this, this really long endeavor to uh, to complete, and some of the time, in just my own experience, I won't ever quite take them to the completion. Like, I, I just lose interest, you know, some large number of hours in, but there are those ones where you take it all the way. Of course, Final Fantasy VII is, is in that list as well. Um, some games you play all the way through, some of them you don't. They just don't quite have that same allure. I'm sure you noticed I just started placing torches everywhere. Uh, you can walk over them so they are pretty much never destroyed. Why not? Got time to kill. So I don't know, should I just upload the completely silent one, or the one where I yammer on about various games that I enjoy playing while I watch myself play? I don't know. All right, I think I was watching this one just to see if I actually ever said anything during the entire day. And at this point was when I was like, oh, I, sh I should mention this. Uh, so I hadn't cleared down to floor 120, uh, which uh, historically in the past was just to unlock the skull caverns. So I didn't really care. Now I'm grabbing the bombs here just to help speed it up. But in this latest patch, uh, he made it so that uh, certain things in the base mine also change when you hit floor 120. Like, it changes the loot tables of some of the monsters. I think, like, the red slimes or various slimes can drop uh, the prismatic shard and 
I don't remember all the details, but it, it changes stuff in the base mine now as well when you unlock floor 120, so it's worth doing. And I got trying to do these last five floors from eight o'clock onward. Um, probably not the best idea. I don't remember what the luck was today, but just based upon how this is going, it looks like it was not very lucky. Oh yeah, the other game that is is actually like one of the very toppest of my list for favorite old school RPGs. Um, or is up there with like the Chrono Trigger and the Final Fantasy 3 or 5. Same difference. Uh, the one on the Super Nintendo um, was that uh, Secret of Mana 3, the fan translated one. Uh, so awesome. And you can get it, uh, I think it was, a, it's one of the only role-playing games where they did multiplayer and they actually did it well. And it's actually kind of like a, an action RPG, which is really hard to pull off on one of those old school systems. But the, uh, the artwork on that game is um, it's something to behold. It's kind of, uh, I, I'd actually, I didn't really realize how intense it was. Uh, given the the system they were working on and the way that sprites work. I was just reading into it a little bit recently um, And just how much effort it goes to make a game look like that on an on an SNES Yeah, it looks like I'm not gonna make Floor 120 tonight. No way. Bad attack. Yep. So I didn't care about fighting until the end of the day because um, if you have no money, there's like no penalty. 